Andy Mogul. Welcome to Beyond the Trailer's coverage of the 2011 Academy Awards, giving you an in-depth look at the top categories. And be sure to vote in our Oscar poll at IndieMogul.com slash BTT Oscar Vote, where one lucky voter will win a $100 AMC Theater gift card. Now let's take a look at the second half of the 10 nominees for Best Picture. 127 hours. Much like The Fighter, this movie is here more out of respect than having an actual shot at winning. Danny Boyle already had his day in the Oscar sun when Slumdog Millionaire swept the awards in 2009, and the result is that he's been made a part of the Oscar in-crowd. Much like the Coen brothers and Daniel Day-Lewis, Boyle is now guaranteed a nod for pretty much anything he does. There was a time when 127 Hours was a real contender for the gold, but in September it made headlines as people fainted during its premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. This not only caused the film's buzz to peak too early, but reminded us that nothing kills an Oscar campaign faster than salacious gossip. The Social Network much like Mark Zuckerberg, everyone wrote off the Facebook movie. It was a mere fad, cashing in on a silly craze. But one look at the team making this movie should have given us a clue it would be so much more. Scott Rudin is the only producer in Hollywood who can give Harvey Weinstein a run for his money when it comes to winning awards. And this year, Rudin becomes only the second producer ever to have two films nominated for Best Picture in the same year, The Social Network and True Grit. Plus, David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin are a creative dream team, both deeply respected by their peers. While The Social Network has gotten the Best Picture Award from almost everyone giving one out, the only thing that stands in its way is the average age of the Academy voter. An older group, many of which are probably not on Facebook, they might feel The Social Network is too hip and not a timeless piece of filmmaking like other contenders. Toy Story 3 when Beauty and the Beast was nominated for Best Picture in 1992, it was a major accomplishment for the animation industry. And while it didn't win, to be recognized alongside several live-action films gave animated films a sense of validation, one that was downgraded when the Academy added the Best Animated Feature Oscar in 2001. To be relegated to its own category means that the chances of an animated feature winning for Best Picture are nil. See, if a live-action movie loses Best Picture, that's the ball game. But an animated movie can still take home the gold in its own category. So, aided by a huge field of nominations, this is what the Academy likes to do. As with Up Last Year, the Best Picture nod for Toy Story 3 is really more of an asterisk on what will most certainly be its win for Best Animated Feature. So good, we let it stand next to the real movies, at least for a little while. True Grit as I said with Danny Boyle, the Coen brothers are part of the Oscar in-crowd. How else would one justify a serious man's Best Picture nomination last year? And the Academy not only adores the Coen brothers, but has their back. When the Hollywood Foreign Press Association humiliated the Coen brothers by completely shutting out True Grit from the Golden Globes, the Academy decided to push back hard with an amazing 10 nominations. That second only to the King's Speech. Not bad for a film that has only won a handful of awards so far and is also a box office hit, which is usually a major turnoff to the Academy. So, are these nominations enough of a pat on the back, or will the Academy go even further and actually give the Coen brothers the gold? Winter's Bone. It's nice to see that the Sundance Film Festival is still relevant. As the industry has stuck its fingers deeper and deeper into what's supposed to be a celebration of independent film, the festival's discoveries seem less and less genuine. But Winter's Bone truly exists outside of the Hollywood system, evidenced by the fact most mainstream audiences have never even heard of it, much less seen it. The film was released back in June, only reaching 141 theaters before closing with just $6 million at the box office. Hollywood insiders did predict it would be between this movie and The Town for the final nomination slot, and it turns out Winter's Bone fits the glass slipper rather than Ben Affleck. With an invitation to the ball secured, we'll have to wait and see if this movie gets to meet Prince Oscar. And that's the second half of the 2011 Best Picture nominees. You can click here to see the first half, and don't forget to vote in Beyond the Triller's Oscar poll by going to IndieMogul.com slash BTTOscarVote. You could win that $100 AMC Theater gift card, but hurry as the poll closes February 20th. I'm Grace Randolph, and I hope you'll check out the rest of BTT's Oscar coverage.